Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Patch Notes, a show where we cover the biggest gaming news from the week in a nice bit-sized package. My name is Drew and as always it's great to see you guys. This episode we're covering the news from the week of November 3rd, 2017. Not a whole lot happened this week, a bunch of games were released like Wolfenstein 2 and Assassin's Creed Origins, but as far as news goes this week was pretty stagnant. However, I do have a few stories I'd like to talk about so let's go ahead and get into it. Call of Duty. Advanced Warfare. Xbox, Xbox One. One. Copy that. $10 on Call of Duty for Xbox One. This week started with a surprise thanks to GameStop. Many gamers, myself included, thought that the video games retailer was dying a very slow and painful death thanks to digital games becoming cheaper and more accessible. Well, GameStop announced a new program this week that has gamers like me kind of actually wanting to go into the store and take advantage of it. Play Pass is a $60 six month program where you can play any game you want from that particular GameStop store's used inventory. Then at the end of that six months, you get to choose one of those games that you played to keep for good. This is kind of like a video game rental service, only that you actually get to keep one of the games that you play. It's an incredibly good value proposition, especially if you see yourself dabbling in a lot of games that are coming out. Personally, I could see myself using this right around the holiday season, or right now. This is when most games are coming out for the year, and when people are receiving games that they don't necessarily want as gifts, so they're trading them in at GameStop, and then you can find those games to pick up for this play pass. Meaning the likelihood of finding a brand new game is actually pretty good at this time of year. Now, keep in mind you do have to be a card holding member at GameStop, which reportedly is now free. I don't know, things may have changed. It's been a while since I've been at GameStop. Hell, it's been years since I've seriously shopped at a GameStop, but this program really has me interested. I'm getting to the age where I really have to be good with my money, so I have to ask myself, are games worth it or are groceries worth it? So it's nice to have a rental service like this where I can still get a game at the end of it, so I don't feel like I'm wasting my money. However, this does seem kind of like a Hail Mary pass by GameStop to try to stay relevant. But for once, this move actually seems pretty appropriate for where the industry is heading. With Microsoft's Games Pass, it seems more and more likely that there will be a Netflix of games sometimes in the future. So GameStop's decision to go forward with this program is not only surprising, it's actually great foresight, which is something that GameStop is notorious for being horrible at. I don't know, there are a lot of parallels here between Blockbuster and GameStop, where Blockbuster started a Netflix-like service to kind of compete with Netflix, but it ultimately crashed and burned. The only difference here is it seems like GameStop is kind of ahead of the curve, and this might actually be a new direction for the company. Considering a lot of gamers are excited about this, I'm inclined to say it's the latter. I mean, keep in mind that Netflix was only a DVD rental service where you got DVDs in the mail and then they changed to doing this digital distribution. That decision changed the face of the company to what it is today. So if GameStop started doing a very similar thing with digital games sometime in the future, then well, I could definitely see that happening with this new change in direction. And now, since I seemingly can't go a single week without mentioning it, it's time for our weekly PUBG news! Yay! Alright, so at Paris Games Week, Microsoft and Bluehole announced that PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds will be officially launching for the Xbox One on December 12th of this year. Right now, it's not exactly clear how the game runs on the console, even the brand new Xbox One X that's coming out next week. Especially when you consider the fact that not many people have actually seen 100 player games running on the console so far, at least not from what I can see. But Bluehole does seem confident that the game will work, and it helps that it's being developed by a separate team, meaning updates and patches will come at separate times for each version. Bluehole also announced that the game would be leaving early access later this December with its official 1.0 patch. This patch will include the long-awaited vaulting system in the game as well as a new map and some other new features. Two things have fans upset about this though. The most obvious one being that PC gamers are upset that Bluehole is taking so much time out of development and working on bugs and stuff to kind of work on this partnership with Microsoft and the Xbox One version of the game. And while I would like to play devil's advocate and say that that is being developed by a separate team so it should not affect the development of the PC version of the game, I have no doubt that throughout this whole process with Microsoft time has been taking out of developing the main PC version of the game to kind of work on this partnership and, and kind of schedule things and get all that sorted out. So yeah, some time has been taking out of the development. That is a valid criticism. Fans are also upset by the fact that Bluehole seems to be focusing on adding new features to the game rather than fixing the problems that have been plaguing the game since its early access launch. Problems like shoddy hit registration, netcode errors, desync, and a bunch of graphical glitches that affect the performance of the game. While I do feel like Bluehole will focus on fixing these problems, I can't help but feel like they are kind of rushing the game to a finished state just because they know their days as a fad are numbered. They want to capitalize on their huge success as much as possible, so releasing a 1.0 patch with a bunch of new features, even if they're not finished features, is kind of better for their bottom line. I do think that Bluehole and PlayerUnknown have the best intentions for the game, but I also think that it has kind of gotten out of their hands. It's simply grown too big for them to handle anymore. 
Hopefully their partnership with Microsoft can kind of help them rein in some of the problems they've been having. For example, the game is moving to using Microsoft's Azure servers instead of Amazon's servers. I'm not sure which service is better, I mean I'm not a developer making a multiplayer focused game, so I don't really know that kind of thing, but I have played a game that uses Microsoft's Azure servers, the first Titanfall, and I really never had a problem with desync or that much lag like ever playing that game, it was great. If the same thing can happen with PUBG, then I'd be very excited. Also, the game will get a huge surge in its player base when it releases on Xbox One, which will hopefully keep it afloat for a few more months. I don't know, here's to hoping that Blue Hole can get their shit together and release a game in a 1.0 state that actually earns the title of Finished. Isn't that crazy that I have to say that these days? God, the industry is going straight down the toilet. And for our final story today, and one that's kind of an update to a previous story that we covered, people are finally getting a glimpse into what Call of Duty's new loot box system looks like, and wow, it's kind of ridiculous. Players who get loot boxes in Call of Duty World War II, whether it's with real world money or in-game currency, they will be able to open those loot boxes surrounded by other players in a social space. Those other players will actually see the loot crate fall from the sky in a dramatic fashion and will be able to see the items that the player gets. It makes it like a microtransaction theater almost. At any rate, this is definitely an attempt by Activision to get more people to buy microtransactions. It heightens the envy aspect of microtransactions that I've talked about previously to a completely higher level like it's ridiculous you know you're basically making a huge display out of people paying real money for these items and it makes people even more jealous that they don't have those items it gives way more attention than just having a new cool skin players actually get to see you earn or earn a new cool skin. This comes right off the heels of Activision's recent controversial patent where they actually tried to research different ways to get people to subconsciously buy microtransactions. At the time Activision stated that they were simply experimenting and that that process hadn't been used in any of their games released to date. Note how Call of Duty World War II is technically being released after they said that. They're trying to be clever here in saying that, oh we haven't used it yet, don't worry, none of the games we've released since we've tried to file this patent, we've used that system. We haven't used it yet. Yeah, they're basically just trying to cover up the fact that they're using that exact system right here. It just seems scummy. Watching the gameplay of this happening feels really just dirty. Not to mention that now I'm pretty sure the reason that Call of Duty World War II even has a social space that's kind of like Destiny is to kind of reinforce this microtransaction system. That's really the only reason to have it. It's absolutely absurd and totally transparent. In fact, now every single time I hear the words Activision, I just think of microtransactions. Almost like I want to come up with a new name for them, Microvision. Yeah, we should just call them Microvision from now on. And I can't help but feel bad for Sledgehammer Games at this point. Whenever Activision wants to introduce a new type of microtransaction in their game, they always do it in a Sledgehammer game. Advanced Warfare was the first time we saw a bona fide loot box system in a Call of Duty game, and it was also Sledgehammer's very first entry in the franchise. I can't help but feel like Activision sees Sledgehammer as a scapegoat for these new features. If the backlash is so immense, then they can just lump all of the blame on Sledgehammer and then just close down the studio as a response. If I worked at Sledgehammer, I would be treading very lightly possibly even looking for another job. Because if the backlash is strong and Activision decides to take a step back on this new microtransaction system, they could very well mean the end of the studio. Or at least the people in it. I mean, I know Activision kind of likes to hollow out their studios and throw the insides out and just fill it back up with different talent, so yeah, that could be very well what's going to happen here if the reception isn't very good. Activision sees Sledgehammer as expendable because they haven't really proved themselves yet. Infinity Ward started the franchise, and Treyarch has the pedigree of the Black Ops series. No matter what, neither of those studios are going to get closed down. Like I said, they're just going to get hollowed out and just kind of left there with their name intact, but they're not going to get rid of the actual studios themselves because they're too significant. They have too much brand recognition. Sledgehammer is still trying to carve out their own place in the Call of Duty franchise, but unfortunately if they're not careful they're going to become known as the studio that just makes all the games with the different microtransactions. And the reason I feel bad for Sledgehammer is because I know they have no choice. They can either implement these features in game or get out. Activision will find people who do it for them no questions asked, so your options are cooperate or leave. And it's not like Sledgehammer is going to do anything other than work on Call of Duty games, so anybody who's working there probably feels stuck professionally. I wouldn't be surprised if after World War II launches there is a mass exodus of people at Sledgehammer. Hell, even though the game's World War II setting is a breath of fresh but familiar air, we all know it was a decision mandated by Activision as a response to the huge success that was Battlefield 1. So even the most basic creative decision of the game, the setting, was decided and mandated by their corporate overlords. 
It's just a shitty situation all around. I may still pick the game up, but only because I'm interested in hearing another story about Big Red 1, which if you haven't seen my review for it, it's right here, and because I want to support the developers at Sledgehammer. However, I will not be purchasing any loot boxes with any real money, and may not even do it with any in-game currency. I mean, it's all cosmetic anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I don't really care. It takes you out of the experience. But to Microvision, I want to make myself loud and clear. We want more unique games, not more microtransactions. And that's it for me this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if there are any updates to the stories that were in this episode, I'll be sure to leave those updates in the comments below. Also, how do you guys feel about these microtransactions? I mean, am I being hyperbolic and saying that it's getting a little out of hand and ridiculous, or am I justified? Oh, and I've decided I'm gonna stop asking you guys to like and subscribe from here on out. I feel like it doesn't make much of a difference, and it mostly just makes me feel kind of gross every time I do it. I have faith that if you guys want to support the show, you'll do that on your own accord, and not because I told you or reminded you is the typical excuse. But anyway, I'll see you guys next week where hopefully we'll have more news. Bye.